This video was brought to you by Indently.io. Learning Python made simple. How's it going, everyone? In today's video, we're going to learn about lambdas in Python. And for this video, we're going to be using a couple of imports. Now, these are not required to actually use lambdas, but since I love type annotations, I'm going to be using those everywhere. So from typing import callable and iterator, then from iter tools, I'm going to import star map. And that's a function that we're going to be using later with lambdas. Now, the very first thing I'm going to do is create a regular function. And this function is going to be called int 2x. And that's going to take a number of type integer and it's going to return to us a string. And this string is going to be n times x. So it's literally just converting whatever number we put in to the corresponding amount of x's. So if we were to, let's say, print into x and pass in five, what we will get back are five x's. Now, the reason I created a regular function here is to show you what it looks like as a lambda. So what we're going to do below it is create int 2x2, which is going to be the lambda version. And this is going to be of type callable. And the callable type is used to annotate functions which are callable or objects which are callable. And I have a full video on the callable type, which I will leave in the description box down below in case you're curious about how to annotate callable functions. Otherwise, I just want you to know that it's not required. If you don't like type annotations, you can just add an equal sign and immediately insert the code after that. But here at Indently, we always annotate all of our code. So I'm going to do so here. Now this callable type is going to take an integer as an argument and it's going to return a string. So this just copies the signature of this over here. As you can see, we take an integer and we return a string. Now to create a Lambda, we use the Lambda keyword and immediately after the Lambda, we take the argument name. So Lambda N is the same thing as requesting this argument over here. Then we actually insert the code, which is going to be a one liner. So N times x. So this is what we're going to return. Now to call it, we can call it exactly the same way. All we did here is create a nameless function. So if we type int 2x2 and we pass in, let's say the value of 10, what we should get back are 10 x's. So writing this code is exactly the same as writing this code. And without the type annotations, as you can see, it's a lot more simple. And usually you would not assign it to a variable. Pep will actually give you a warning about that, but this is just to show you how it actually works. And in this example, using the first approach makes much more sense because it's much more readable. And since we're going to use it as a regular function later, it just makes more sense to create a regular function. This would confuse a lot of devs because it's just not necessary. It's not illegal, but it's not necessary. So let's move on to where you should use lambdas. And to do so, I'm going to remove both of these and I'm going to create a mapped object. Or actually, I'm going to remove this as well. So mapped, which will be of type iterator, which contains strings, is going to equal this map object over here. And the first argument of the map should be the function which we will apply to a certain iterable. For example, if we want to convert everything to an X, we could type in into X here, and then we can pass in one, two, three, and four. And it's going to apply this function to all of these elements so that when we print the list of mapped, we will get the corresponding values. But imagine you're only going to do this once. Does it really make sense to create a whole new function for something that you'll only use once? Well, that's actually up to you. But in some scenarios, it just might make more sense to use a Lambda here. So I'm going to zoom out a bit so I can insert the lambda. So lambda n, n times x. As you could see, it's a very simple operation and it just saves us the trouble from having to write all this extra code. Now at a first glance, this might be a bit more complicated than creating a function, but if you're only going to use this function once, it could be a good idea to get used to the idea of using lambdas because now when we run this, it's going to run exactly the same way. It takes n as an argument and then multiplies it by x and returns the result. Now for the next example, I want to show you that lambdas can actually take multiple arguments. So here we're going to create a function called multiply string, and that's going to take text of type string and n of type integer, and it's going to return to us a string. Then we're going to return text times n. So as you can see, it's another very simple operation which could easily be converted into a lambda. And immediately below it, we're going to create the lambda equivalent. So multiply string, two, which will be of type callable. And that's going to take two arguments this time, string and integer. And it's going to return to us a string. And that's going to equal the lambda 
of the string and the integer. And what it'll return is the string times the integer. Now here I just called the text variable s because it's a lot shorter and a lot more simple, but nothing stopping you here from actually inserting text. So the lambda can easily just look like that. It doesn't have to be just one character. Anyway, I'm going to remove this because we're going to be using the lambda once again with a function from itatools. So now what we're going to do is create some data, which is going to be of type list of tuple of string to integer. And that's going to equal the following. Bob with a three, X with a five, and Python with two. And this should actually be square brackets. Now what we're going to do next is create a star map, which is going to be of type iterator of type string. And that will equal star map with the following function, multiply string, and it's going to take the data. So what star map does is actually insert these arguments into this function and then return an iterator that contains all the results. So to show you what that does, we're going to print the list of this star map what we're going to get back is the result of each operation using the data that we created over here. So Bob was multiplied three times, X was multiplied five times, and Python was multiplied two times. But once again, we did not have to create a whole function for this. We could easily just have used a lambda. We could type in lambda sn and return s times n. And that would eliminate the need to create a whole new function that we would only use once in our code anyway. So now if we were to run this, we would get the exact same result back, but this time using a lambda. Now I'm going to show you one more way that you can actually visualize this to try to make it easier to understand how lambdas actually work. So what we're going to do here is type in lambda, or actually first we're gonna add parentheses, so lambda s, and what we're going to print is the f string of s times three and put that in parentheses and type in dot capitalize with some exclamation marks. So on its own, this doesn't do anything. We just created a nameless function here, but to actually call it, we add some parentheses after followed by the text that we actually want to use. So this is the argument that we're adding to our Lambda, which is the equivalent to adding the parentheses directly after the function name. So here, if you were to add, yo, this part is the function, but here it has a name and that's exactly the same as this part here, which is the function, but without a name. Anyway, here we're calling it immediately, which means that once we run this, what we should end up with is yo, yo, yo. So that's all a Lambda is. It's a nameless function, which you can just call on the spot. And Lambdas do not need to return anything. So if we were to create something called display list, and that's going to be a callable, which will take a list and return none, then we can do something such as Lambda L for list, print unpack the L with the separator set to this comma here and the end set to dot backslash N. Now we can display any list we want. We can type in display list and add Bob and James and even Guy, or we can display the list of one, two, and three. So that when we run this, we get the following result. And that's really all you need to know about lambdas. Now I do have a few general tips, such as when I mentioned that PEP discourages people from assigning lambdas to variables, which means that when I told you we could create a function just by typing in function lambda x, x times two, this is actually discouraged because it's not that common and can hurt readability. And in my code editor, I've actually disabled the warning that PEP usually would give me because sometimes I might want to do this and I personally enjoy the freedom, but it's something you're going to have to judge for yourself. You're not going to see it being used often like this, but I have seen some code bases that do this and it's up to them. It's not the worst thing in the world. It's just something that PEP discourages and it's good to follow PEP since a lot of us follow it and it makes it easier to read each other's code. But that's just my opinion. And I think you should always prioritize PEP over my opinion. And another tip is to always keep your lambdas simple. Lambdas are best when you keep them simple. Use them when you're only going to use logic once and when the logic is simple. Otherwise opt in for a function because functions can hold more lines of code and they are generally much more readable than lambdas. But yeah, that just about covers everything I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know in the comment section down below what you think about lambdas or whether you're still confused about something. But otherwise, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.